Ayan, kamusta kayo dyan mga kamets? Good morning. Ay, good morning sa amin. Good evening sa inyo. Ayan na, malapit na matapos ang uh, uh, buong linggo. Thank you so much again sa lahat ng mga sumusuport sa atin. Yung mga nagbibigay ng words of encouragement, inspiration. Uh, hindi naman yun ang hinahanap natin necessarily. But of course, we always appreciate uh, any point of support na binibigay niya sa amin. Throughout the weeks, medyo hectic, hectic talaga yung schedule over the past, I would say, four or five months at least, no? Uh, Tuloy-tuloy itong mga movements natin across, uh, across the earth, kumbaga. Um, and uh, kakatapos ko lang yung engagements ko dito sa South Carolina. I know may mga kameta tayo sa Charleston and mga other cities na nag, uh, uh, nag-message kung dadaan ako dyan. And, then, and, and they kindly offered uh, to take us around. And I would, uh, itong sasabihin ko, definitely I always look forward to catching up with the mga kametas natin from all around the world. Ano lang. Basta wag lang, ano, uh, uh, basta yung, wag lang yung mga stalker, basta fans talaga, or mga, mga secret DDS, mga gano'n. Wag naman sana. Basta yung mga totoong fans. Uh, joke lang yan, uh, actually friend nga natin, kahit DDS, loyalist, whatever. Alam ko naman mga kababayan natin, pag nasa in-person na, mabait lang kayo. Eh. Online lang tayo ng asaran. So, thank you so much sa lahat mga nag-offer. Um, yun lang, medyo tight talaga yung schedule ko dito. But definitely, pag bumalik tayo dito sa South, uh, sa US, uh, hopefully, may mga kameta tayo ma-meet here and there. Uh, kailangan ko na pumunta sa kabila naman ng, um, ng ano, pond. Medyo, may mga upcoming talks din tayo sa University of California, Berkeley, uh, uh, among others. So, thank you so much again din dun sa mga kaibigan natin, among others who arrange this, of course. Kasama din dyan si Dr. Alessandro Claudio. Um, may mga iba pa ako mga kailangan ayusin pa. May mga hawaan, hawaan na pa and all of that. Pero tingnan ko ako makasya ko pa sa schedule natin. Of course, dahil uh, alam niyo naman na miss natin ng family natin. Uh, si mommy, daddy, si lola, yung mga ganun. So I'm glad at least, thank Lord, nung, uh, during the holidays uh, last week, nakapag-catch up naman tayo with Lola sa Baguio and family loved ones. So, again, thank you so much sa lahat ng mga nagmamahal, nagsusupport sa atin. Alam ko yung iba sa inyo, siguro may mga uh, konting samang loob pa kayo sa akin before dahil ano, may mga, mga, mga kantsawan tayo, may mga bardagulan tayo na hindi tugma dun sa mga gusto niyo mga kandidato or politiko. But I know that they, deep inside naman... Um, na I get you naman saan tayo galing, diba? That the things that we're doing here, yes, may humor, may kanchawan, but at the end of the day, what we have to, what we want to do here is to have a proper political discourse, discuss yung future ng ating bayan, future ng ating region, at in many ways, yung future ng ating um, ang mundo, yes, uh, yes, tintin na naman yung book natin, sir. Um, now, so kaapon, sobrang tight yung schedule natin, dito um because every day I have to wake up very early morning uh and uh yung isang night grabe talaga so I had to wake up very early morning to get some writing done of course alam niyo naman yung time zone differences mahirap yon pag early morning dito patapos ng araw diyan so kailangan nating habulin mo work and then very kind you see Lee um yung isa sa organizer dito sa World Affairs Council um took us around and then pag uwi ko kaagad humabol naman ako dun sa mga oh, alam niyo naman yung mahaba natin mga daldalan with sir R&R and then I had to do a very long powerpoint which I had to compress in a presentation kahapon and um as it stands um actually interestingly yung talk ko kahapon uh with pretty uh decent showing pretty large amount of uh, people showing up mostly the uh folks uh in the retirement communities, a lot of them with very high level background, people in top positions in diplomacy, in business, in government, in, in military, etc. So very, very good crowd. And then there's a church, pa, Presbyterian church by an event. So as soon as uh, pictures are out, as soon as uh, videos, cameras are out, uh, if our videos are out, if she shared in that, yan, it was a very, very good, um, very good uh, conversations, actually sets of conversations. So one was, a breakfast conversation before the event uh, and then it was the talk itself which was around one and a half hour or so and I had to strictly keep it within 45 minutes lecture then 45 minutes discussion and then humabol pa kami dun sa, uh, sa lunch meeting and it's a lunch meeting a lot of conversations no 
Ang interesting kasi dito is yung mga kausap natin dyan. Ito yung mga dating CEO, dating mga top surgeons, dating mga top diplomats. So, they're very, very informed people. Super informed people. At sino naman tayo? Isang bata lang naman tayo na galing sa Baguio. Uh, I don't know, but, but I, I, the, 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 I, the hospitality, the southern hospitality is really, really something. And I'm very glad that the discussion was definitely not partisan. As you know, guys, I have my own take on Trump and and you know a number of other issues here and there but the discussions were extremely extremely um enriched uh, and and reaching um obviously pinag-usapan din namin yung South Carolina politics concerning the fact na si Nick Haley no who came closest to giving some sort of contest to Donald Trump's uh, Republican primaries ay galing dito sa South Carolina so we had some discussions about uh, also politics state politics in South Carolina her her track record as a governor here uh, so there were some who were quite impressed with her I think everyone was impressed with her when it comes to her crisis management especially in um, the hurricane in this part of the world but there were I think some disagreements about uh, how effective she was as a governor overall in terms of day-to-day -day politics and grind obviously discussions about American foreign policy, America's policy in Gaza, um, the, you know, the, the special relationship uh, um, that, that the U.S. has uh, with, with a number of countries around the world, Europe, Ukraine, Russia. Um, so it's very interesting. I really appreciate those kinds of discussions and they, they turn out even better than I uh, imagined and, and even more on, uh, enriched. Now, those are talk not and obviously... Uh, I think I was primarily invited to give a talk then on some West Philippine Sea issues and Taiwan, which I covered. But I also tried to give a bigger picture. And yung ginagawa natin dito sa mga talks natin all around the world is to say, yes, may dalawa tayong higante, America at saka China. But when it comes down to it, hindi lang naman sila ang may hanash sa buhay, di ba? As big and powerful as US and China are, the two superpowers of the world, may masabi rin ang ibang bansa. And if anything, over time, mas may masabi pa yung mga ibang bansa. Uh, katulad ng India, Indonesia, Vietnam, definitely Philippines is coming to the picture. Uh, Japan, you don't, you cannot uh, count out Japan. Japan will always be there and Japan is, is a very major, major player and actor. Um, despite the fact that, you know, it's, a, it's an aging population among others. Um, th so there, there, there are many different actors, not to mention Europe is getting more involved, more directly involved, more aggressively involved uh, in making sure that um, tutulungan nila yung mga mas malilit ng bansa uh, to make sure na diversify nila yung economic relations nila. They go beyond just dealing with China uh, to make sure that they can contribute more proactively to upholding of international law, including the United Nations Convention Law of the Sea. So, hindi lang mga, uh, mga Ingl Inglaterra, hindi lang Inglaterra, hindi lang Pransya, bati mga Aleman, no? uh, bati mga Aleman, mga Dutch, among other sira rin, uh, they're they're planning to have more and more um direct no uh participation in this part of the world through deployment of naval assets warships uh whatnot all right so there 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 are all sorts of different interesting developments happening in this kind of in this part of the world and obviously the timing of the conversations we're having right now in the us is is, is also very very important uh because after all um in few days time uh, so next week na ito, ayan, si Junior, Marcos Junior, minamahal niyong Marcos Junior, uh, papunta na dito sa Amerika para makapagpulong uh, kay President, uh, President Joseph Biden. At kasama rin dyan, and of course that's what makes this very very interesting mga kameta, is kasama rin dyan si Fumio Kishida, alright, yung Prime Minister ng Japan. So it will be an unprecedented first time ever trilateral summit between Philippines, Japan, and U.S., which I have termed as JAFUS, so that it also rhymes with AUKUS. Because as you know, the United States has finalized, uh, or has had had finalized earlier, uh, is upon trilateral security arrangement with Australia and the United Kingdom, United Kingdom, now AUKUS, with a particular focus on the development of um, nuclear-powered submarines, not nuclear missile-carrying submarines, but nuclear-powered submarines. And then, of course, um, last year also you had this important trilateral summit kung saan uh, nagpulong ang leaders ng South Korea, Japan, and United States, another important trilateral grouping. As you know, mga Koreans and Japanese, may dynamics mga yan. At uh, as you know, um, I think yung mga 
mga sobrang bentang mga movies sa Korea. Usually, ito yung mga movies kung saan tinatalo nilang Japan, right? Uh, and, and, and yung isang um, movie na palabas ngayon sa Korea na bago na dun sa yung kanilang naval batter, battle against Japan uh, when they defeated uh, the invading samurais from Japan uh, the, the, during the, I mean, the, this is probably the pre chosen or one of the major kingdoms in South Korea. So, as you know, ang laki ng dynamics between um, South Korea, uh, yung dynamics in Japan and South Korea is very complicated. Malalim ang hugot ng mga Koreans uh, laban sa mga Hapon, especially dun sa mga ginawa ng Hapon sa kanila nung, um, nung kinolonize sila from the 1890s all the way to the end of Second World War. So hanggang ngayon, extremely, extremely, uh, extremely competitive uh, uh, yung, yung dalawang bansa na yan. And if you are in South Korea, believe me, the last thing you want to do is to praise something from Japan. Right. Although the Japanese are more charitable about this, they just laugh it off in competitiveness among South Koreans. But South Koreans are extremely, extremely competitive with the Japanese. I mean, mention anything. I don't know. Cherry Blossom, the Koreans will say, oh, our version is better, right? Well, pagdating naman sa pop music and all and culture, mukhang medyo panalo ng Korea ngayon, at least sa pop music. So yung K-pop definitely is doing way better than J-pop nowadays. Pero bati sa anime, humahabal na rin mga Koreans. But of course, mga batang 90s and 2000s, Team Japan kami no? <laughs> when it comes to that. Diba? Um, so there is a very, very deep-seated uh, kind of uh, grievance in, in Korea, similar to China, laban sa mga Japon. And, and time and again, yung issues ng reparations, issues ng comfort women, issues ng mga abuso ng ginawa ng Japon nung Second World War. And before it comes up in bilateral relationship, there were times that South Korea suspended intelligence sharing with with uh, with Japan. There were times that a Japanese journalist, I think, was arrested uh, in South Korea because of you know again again you know, disagreements on issues of historical revisionism in Japan. Again, I hope personally I'm quite critical of the fact that sa tingin ko talaga may may pakakulang talaga ng Japan pagdating sa recognition of 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 its mistakes and all. It's not about one speech that I don't know one or two prime minister in Japan gave. It's about um, institutionalizing redemption, right? And this is what we see in uh, Germany. So in Germany, just malapit lang sa hotel namin, no, nandun yung Holocaust Memorial. No? So constantly in Germany, you see, mem- uh, you see uh, reminders, um, you see institutionalized uh, re- uh, uh, re- um, repentance, no? Um, by by the Germans um, when it comes to yung mga sobrang mga malalaking uh, krimen na ginawa nila nung Second World War. Now, 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 that is not to say that others can should get off the hook, but obviously, yung ginawa nila sa Holocaust was totally next level of you know genocidal inhumanity. Obviously, other countries also committed a lot of crimes. The Ottomans, for instance, had their own genocide against the Armenian people, something that today's Turkish regime does not recognize. And in fact, if you push for that argument in Turkey, you're going to be in, in deep, deep trouble. And some of their greatest thinkers, Orhan Pamuk, among others, their Nobel Prize uh, literary genius, um, is living outside Istanbul, his, his, his beloved city, because you know, um, because of, you know, the, the kind of issues that he raised about the Armenian genocide. Obviously, mga ibang bansa, mga, mga Britain, mga Pranses, mga, mga Amerikano, lahat sila may ginawang so, sobrang daming mali. In fairness, in fact, one of the interesting things that came out during one of our discussions dito sa South Carolina with some of the folks here was yung, uh, yung daming, uh, yung, yung, yung casualties uh, ng Philippine-American war, no? Because alam niya naman, uh, yung revolusyon natin laban sa Espanya. Pero hindi natin masyadong pinag-usapan yung revolusyon natin laban sa, uh, sa mga Amerikano. Uh, it is not true na nung dumating mga Amerikano, biglang, hello, happy na tayo and take over the country. Hindi naman tayo ganun. Lumaban ang mga Pilipino, lumaban ang ating mga, uh, mga ilustrado, lumaban yung ating mga katipuneros and revolutionaries, including General Aguinaldo. They kept on fighting for a few years um, and uh, by some account, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos died directly and indirectly as a result of the war. But so, dito sa America, I don't see as much recognition of their dark past in the Philippines, including, you know, the colonization of the Philippines. In fact, in term na colony, colonization, is not something I hear much in conversations, in official conversations. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, pagdating sa America, hindi sila masyado nag, uh, uh, they're not educating uh, their, their, their folks enough about also their own uh, colonial past in the Philippines, among others. But, this is all about 
but this is America. I mean, ano naman, uh, wala naman silang ginagawa mali, di ba? Lahat naman ng ginagawa nila, tama, di ba? Ganun naman eh. Parang China din yan, di ba? Yun din sa China. Wala naman maling China. Tapos yung sa China pa, sila pa ang diktima, di ba? Sa so, China, pag nagselta, parang lit nilang bansa, parang hina nilang bansa, parang kawawa nilang bansa, parang atin lang pinag-usapan. 100 years of humiliation and opium wars and all. And I always say, buti pa sa inyo, 100 years lang kami. 400, 500 years of humiliation. Yung mga mga kapitbahay natin, also, sobrang kinawa ko sila ng mga Dutch, ng mga British, uh, not to mention yung mga colonies of Germany and Africa. So there were many horrible things that happened throughout the centuries in different countries around the world. Pero pag dating sa China, pag nagsalita sila, parang sila lang ang nakawa, kinawawa ng ibang bansa. So obviously tells you that there's definitely this sense of uh, uh, there's this sense of entitlement, there's sense of hubris, the sense of inherent in uh, superiority that that unfortunately um, uh, blinds uh, China strategists and uh, diplomats to to also the grievances and and feelings and sentiments of smaller countries in the region, right? Uh, ito yung tinatawag na superpower narcissism, right? Yung mga narcissism. Nakikita rin natin sa Russia yan. Pag si Putin nagsalita, parang sila pa yung kawawa. Uh, never mind the fact na in-invade nila yung Georgia, in-invade nila yung Ukraine, right? Binubuli nila yung mga maliit na bansa sa, around the region. Uh, they they bully their way through Central Asia. Well, I know this because you know, I'm familiar with those parts of the world, right? So, So this this is what we're facing right now. But anyway, balikan natin yan. Of course, nap, uh, napag-usapan natin with uh, si Ronaldo Liamas, Richard Alden, sa itong issue natin to a certain degree um, the other day. But but let me tell you guys, uh, pagdating dito sa um, pagdating dito sa issue ng uh, trilateral summit between Philippines, Japan, and the US, ang basa ko talaga dito is um, tatlo. Tatlo. Unang-una, I think, and this is where sabi ko, dapat ingat talaga ang Pilipinas. And, and alam ko, dahil si BBM medyo pababa, spaghetti pababa yung approval ratings niya, I'm sure na mayroon siyang, uh, you know, there's this, uh, how should I put it? There's this incentive for him to go all in sa West Philippines issue and by extension to go all in dito sa ating aliansa with America. Not to mention, itong emerging also military cooperation natin with Japan at a whole different level. All right. I have some problems with that. Uh, ang, ang fear ko dito is, baka we will eventually overlimit our room for maneuver. Because I'm sure ang hihingi ng mga Hapon at hihingi ng mga Amerikano is maximal, flexible access dun sa mga pinaka prized military as assets and facilities natin, right? Now, in theory, that shouldn't be a problem when you deal with your allies and friends. But clearly, um, pagdating sa Pilipinas, um, I would say we're the most vulnerable to to China's retribution and reprisals. Um, Japan can hold its own. The United States is way out. Of the region, I mean, they're, they have outer territories, Guam, Hawaii, but, you know, mainland Americas, across the Pacific Ocean. Philippines is very vulnerable. It's very much on the front line. And ambasa ko dito, a lot of the bullying that China is doing, including, again, this latest bullying na ginawa nila sa Philippine Coast Guard just few hours, few hours ago, a lot of that is because natatakot sila, nabibigyan natin ng access ng mga Amerikano at potentially even mga Hapon and others, dun sa mga key bases natin sa north of the Philippines, right? Kaya nga, um, I think it was important that yung governor of Batanes recently came out and clarified that hindi na uh, matutuloy yung uh, U.S. Uh, port facility construction plan sa Batanes because I felt, I always felt that would be a, a tad um, provocative perhaps. I mean, I, I'm not, again, I'm, I'm all for us developing whatever we can, but you have to do this steady uh and 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 surely and 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 in a calibrated manner no so i really i really hope na etong discussion ngayon upcoming discussion ngayon sa washington dc between kishida marcos and biden dapat marcos makes sure na he doesn't get overly involved in in all sorts of different issues and if ever he's gonna give a lot of access to to the americans 
um, and also to Japan because Japan is also negotiating its visiting forces agreement style deal with the Philippines and RAA reciprocal access agreement. Uh, reciprocal, but I, we know naman ang Japan naman talaga mas magpadala sa, sa atin kaysa the other way around while we're still developing our capacities. Um, ang point ko lang, I, I hope the Philippines make sure that we are playing this very smartly along with very effective diplomacy behind the scenes. And importantly, I hope hindi lang boots and bases ang makukuha natin dito. Sobrang importante dito na ang Pilipinas gets really decent, good defense uh, support uh, from these countries. Uh, last time I checked, wala pa tayong nakuang kahit isang advanced modern fighter jet from the United States, right? And I'm not also sure if you have got a single advance as in 21st century, not Vietnam era, not 1990s, not refurbished frigate or uh, warship. The, the best weapons we have, the most modern weapons we have, they're all from South Korea. The missile systems that we're going to have is from India. So none of it is from the United States. And then pagdating naman sa Japan, uh, Japan naman has been very, very helpful to us. Japan, Japan. But uh, we want to make sure na as Japan relaxes uh, restrictions on export of advanced weapon systems, dapat ng Pilipinas could, should be a, pri a primary, um, uh, not only customer, because we're hoping to get a lot of these advanced weapon systems on the best possible deal, right? So that's one of the issues that is going to come up there. But the second issue, I think, is also to make sure na hindi lang puro mga armas lang pag-usapan. Dapat pag-usapan din ang economic uh, economic cooperation. I think that is extremely, extremely important, particularly pagdating sa uh, semiconductor development, manufacturing investments. So those are very important things that Marcos has to talk about. He has to bring investments. He has to bring in job. He has to... In, no, I'm not talking about donations. I'm not at least, you know, the, the discounted deals or whatever. Um, semiconductors, those are the things that the Philippines has to focus on during these conversations. Japan is in the midst of a renaissance in a semiconductor of industry, investing $60, $70 billion in it. So Japan could also probably tie in the Philippines into semiconductor um, development and the United States has to be more proactive in, in pushing for a bilateral uh, free trade agreement with the Philippines or something that really makes sure that Philippine exports to the U.S. are far more competitive than they are because Vietnam is exporting like, what, seven, eight, nine, ten times than the Philippines to the United States. That's a crazy situation, right? Uh, and lastly, um, I think this is also about making sure na ma-insulate itong aliansa ng tatlong bansa na yan should Ed Duterte come back or more urgently for that matter, uh, a Trump win uh, comes over the horizon, right? Kasi if Trump wins or Duterte's come back, there are many ways that Duterte's can come back, um, Biglang baka everything will be up in the air. So I think the challenge also right now is to super tighten military intelligence, cybersecurity cooperation, strategic cooperation, that whoever wins in U.S. elections in November, whoever becomes the next Filipino president, or if ever BBM has to step down or whatever, replace, the fundamentals of those alliances will hold together. So I think that's, that's why it's also kind of a race against time. Although, of course, I'm still... Uh, not sure Trump will win this November. I think Biden is still doing pretty decently in some of the bat battleground states uh, based on some of the surveys. So the surveys are actually very inconclusive. There, there are 12 surveys out there. Six of them say this, six of them said that. And I think a lot of the Democrats are also now angry at Biden because of his policies on Gaza and others. But who knows? Maybe come November, they're going to have a very different stance on these issues. All right, guys, medyo humabol tayo sa next natin ng mga gagawin. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga sumuporta sa atin. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga nag-comments, suggestions, stickers, stars, whatever. All of these things uh, really, really, uh, uh, you know, gives us a sense of encouragement, inspiration. And I'll tell you what, kagabi, kahit sobrang pagod na ako, I went out, took some videos and all. I mean, learning some of the basic things, you know, the, the tripod and all of that. So I'm just trying to experiment also to do things that hindi lang pang politika, pang sports pa at pang pamilya. All right? At uh, baka naman, baka naman, gusto natin mag-showbiz, so kailangan natin ng mga production, all right? Pero self-production lang, all right? On that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. God bless. Talk to you soon.